Welcome to Adams Polishing 101. In this machine polishing segment, we're gonna teach how to get a perfect finish on a variety of vehicles. Now, before we just jump in and start polishing though, I wanna really carefully assess what the condition is of the car that we're gonna do the paint correction, the polishing on. Let's go ahead and take this vehicle and do one of two things. We wanna take it out into the bright sun so we can really easily see the damage, or we wanna be indoors under some outstanding light. Today happens to be a beautiful Colorado day, so outside we go. So here we have three vehicles in three very different conditions. For instance, the 2013 Range Rover, it's got 100,000 miles on it. This thing has been driven through car washes almost exclusively, you can tell by the finish. And then let's go ahead and grab onto the keys and open the door every time, just to add a few extra bonus scratches. This car needs complete paint correction for sure. Now, how about a brand new car? For instance, a brand new Mercedes. People always think, well, my car's brand new. I don't need to, I don't need to paint correct. I don't need to polish it. Wrong. Guess what? This car was washed repeatedly on the lot before you got it, and for sure, it could use some love too. Then, let's take a look at my 72 GMC Jimmy. Now this thing, it's only got 80,000 miles on it. It's got original paint, but it's almost 50 years old. So through that time, you're gonna wanna use some love to keep that paint looking great. However, the process will be very different on an old single stage finish than on these newer vehicles. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the processes depending on the vehicles to achieve perfection, no matter what you're driving. All right, so on this Rover, we found quite a bit of damage, right? Well, it's 100,000 miles and it's seven years old. So you got your clear coat, then you have your color coat, then you have your primer, and then you have your substrate, which is either gonna be steel, fiberglass, aluminum, carbon fiber, whatever it is. A key scratch goes all the way through, all the way to the bone, especially if they're really putting their thumb into it, really douchebags that like to key cars. I wanna strangle them, drives me crazy violence to your car. That sort of severe scratch, you're gonna have to put paint back on because the paint is missing. At that point, you're probably looking at a professional body shop to do that. The next kind of scratch will be a superficial scratch that's only down in your clear coat or your color coat. In other words, at the bottom of the scratch, it might look white on a black car, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that scratch is all the way to the metal or whatever the substrate is. So on a, on a finish like that, a little bit of fine sandpaper plus polishing can potentially remove that scratch. Now the next kind of scratch are the scratches that most people call swirl marks. There's two kinds of scratches that sort of make that term up. One is a buffer swirl. In other words, a buffer, a rotary buffer with a wool pad, you go over the finish back and forth, think 1960s, 70s, rotary, wool pad, old school technology, heavy, gritty compound. When you're done, you can see every pass that buffer made. Those are called buffer swirls or halos. They're not to be confused with cobweb scratching, which is all over this vehicle, which is caused by pore washing, going through a car wash, using a nasty old wash mitt, using a beach towel full of sand to dry, uh, using a, a duster, car dusters, those will cause lots of scratches. So those types of scratches are typically referred to as swirl marks, but really they don't look as much like buffer swirls, okay? They look more like cobweb scratches. We're gonna tell you exactly how to remove each of those types of scratches that can be removed with a polisher. Starting with a smooth finish is critical. So on this, we went ahead and used a clay bar first to remove all the surface contamination. You're gonna see something like this on the clay bar. Now, that is just the hood of this Rover. So there is quite a bit of fallout, tree sap, all kinds of bonded contaminants that make your clay bar look like heck, but it's so smooth now and beautiful. So before we start, I really wanna do a test area on this vehicle. And this way I know, okay, if I can get this little area perfect, well then I can certainly get the rest of the vehicle perfect. When I'm trying to remove scratches and swirls, 
in cobweb scratches from a vehicle like this, seven years old, 100,000 miles, lots and lots of damage, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna need, at minimum, one of our compounding pads. Well, if you're using the blue pad, use the blue compound, okay? I know that I'm gonna, at minimum, need our blue foam compounding pad. I'm gonna start at setting four. I'm gonna use four little blobs. Boom, 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 boom. You'll see that they're up and they're not all the way sunk into the pad. Well, if I just take my finger and kind of rub that compound a little bit into this pad, for one, I'll have a way lesser chance of actually slinging the compound, but for two, it'll make it spread easier as well. So, boom, wipe my finger off on the polishing towel. You always wanna put your cord over your shoulder. I'm just gonna spread this polish around a little bit, and then I'm gonna turn the polisher on. I'm gonna go across one direction, all the way across the panel, and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I'm gonna make sure and apply maybe one, maybe two pounds of pressure, just to make sure that I have complete control over the tool. And again, my whole goal with this is to find out what this vehicle specifically needs to get the finish knocked out. As I'm polishing, I'm overlapping about 10 to 15%, not more. A few other notes. When you're using a long throw polisher like this, you wanna make sure that that pad is dead flat on the finish. Use one hand and make sure that it's completely balanced. If, if I'm off like this, it's gonna just go that way. If I'm off a little bit, it's gonna take the tool and move it around. When I'm flat, I can one hand control the polisher with no sweat. So you're gonna notice that I'm not going too fast across the panel. In fact, my goal is to correct in as few passes as possible. In other words, when I'm going from this side to this side, I come down, I overlap 10, 15%, I go across again. If I go fast, I'm gonna to have to go across that panel dozens of times. After trying the blue pad in our compound, now what we wanna do is just take a look and see how does it look. So, using your swirl finder light, I'm gonna go ahead and take our polishing towel. I just wanna remove some of this residue. I wanna take a look and say, okay, was that enough or do I need the more aggressive microfiber cutting pad? Turns out, the rover paint's a little bit easier to correct than we thought. So, actually, that was, that pretty much got it knocked out to where it looks fantastic. Let's just pretend for a second that it's not gonna be that easy for you because often it takes a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead, take our pad conditioning brush, gently remove some of the dried compound from the blue pad, take it off, and then I wanna step it up one pad. Why? A few remaining scratches I'd like to see eliminated our most aggressive pad here, the microfiber cutting pad, blue and white, certainly with the blue compound. This one, I like to do a little circle around because it doesn't spread in there quite as easily or cleanly. Cord over the shoulder, a little bit of rubbing before I turn it on. Now, very likely, after using the microfiber cutting pad, very likely, I'll have what's called some micro-marring. Micro-marring is when you use a more aggressive pad or compound, and instead of coming off dead perfect, micro-marring causes a tiny bit of haze. That tiny bit of haze is easily removed, but on a perfect black finish, to get that micro-marring out, it might take a few different steps. I wanna take a look and see, do we have any micro-marring here? Are there, is there any haze to this finish that I'd like to further correct? This finish 
does not look as perfectly shiny as it did when I used the blue foam pad. However, a few of these really much deeper scratches that I wanted to eliminate are now gone. Before I remove this pad, I always want to take just two seconds. I have a feeling that this finish can come up pretty much fantastic with just the polish and just the soft white pad. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of polish onto that pad. And then what I like to do is I like to just get that polish spread into the pad nicely so I don't sling it and it makes it spread nicely. Okay. Now I'm gonna go straight over. So the polisher speed is one of the variables that will help you achieve perfection on your finish or less than perfect. If you see a lot of hazing in your finish, slow your polisher down a little bit. If you feel like you're not cutting fast enough, speed your polisher up a little bit. Remember, every finish is gonna require a slightly different approach to get to perfect. All right, now, you might notice that I've got a little mark here on the backing plate. Now, that's just a Sharpie marker. These don't come with that. That makes it clear so that you know if you're not dead flat on the finish, this polisher will actually stop spinning. Now, this is a dual action polisher. In other words, it's oscillating, and then it's also spinning slowly. Those dual actions make for a flawless finish. By making sure that this pad is always spinning just a little bit, you will notice that your finish will be more perfect and that you will be able to correct a more consistent piece of panel at a time and you will get a better end result. You can see there, how I stop, if the pad stops spinning, when I'm flat, it spins well. Watch now, I'm gonna pull the tape off and see what the before and the after looks like on this finish. So now that we've got a complete understanding of what this vehicle needs, well now we can go ahead and go around it and do the rest of the vehicle. But a few things we wanna do first. One, we're gonna take some tape and we're gonna tape off any plastic finish that goes right up to a painted finish because it makes it so much easier to go around and polish that out when I know that I'm not gonna be putting compound or polish on to that sort of rough textured plastic. So on the 2013 seven-year-old black Land Rover, we got it looking fantastic pretty much entirely with just the blue foam pad. Now, now we're working on this brand new Mercedes. It does have 2,000 miles on it. We already did our test area on this car and we've already figured out that actually this is actually quite a bit more work to correct than that one is. So on this car, we're for sure gonna use the microfiber cutting pad because it's so much harder of a clear coat. We know that this is gonna require a bigger bite because I've already done my test area and I found out, guess what? I can't get those hard, hard, nasty little scratches out without a more aggressive pad. So using the microfiber cutting pad and our blue compound, I'm gonna go ahead and do an area. Now, I already did clay the hood of this vehicle, so you know. I'm gonna start at setting four. I'm gonna slowly go up to setting six. Why? Because I'm gonna need everything I got to get the scratches out of the finish of this brand new Mercedes. So again, a new car does not make a perfect car. When I can't reach all the way across, I can one hand this polisher and control it very well. So I've made one pass just up and back. I can tell you that the matted down microfiber cuts less than the microfiber does when I brush it up. So guess what? Time to hold this guy on my knee. And go ahead and quickly Clean out that pad. Now when I'm done for the day, I absolutely want to use, ideally with this pad, our microfiber revitalizer, 
I want to clean this pad super well, rinse it out, wring it out, and leave it out to dry. But while I'm using it, I want to continually use this pad brush to continually get the compound from laying down in the pad and fluffing it up so that it continues to cut. Now, I can see that I've got some decent amount of compound in there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little detail spray on there because all I need to do is re-wet the solids that are already in the pad. Now, how I'm gonna do this different than I did on the Land Rover with a, with a little bit easier to correct paint, instead of putting no pressure down, I'm gonna put two or three pounds of pressure over the head, so that's right here over the head. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from setting four, I'm gonna take it all the way to setting six, okay, which is full speed. I'm gonna make those passes very slowly. In other words, I'm gonna go across the panel very slowly so that I can correct as completely as possible. Now I'm gonna take a quick look. I just wanna remove a little bit of this compound. I wanna see, did we eliminate the scratches and how much micro marring is behind? On a soft black paint, you will have to go to the polish and using this super fine red pad to get it to go just to perfect. So remember, there's more than one compound in one pad or one compound in two pads. There are mixtures of those that'll help you achieve perfection, and it might not be always the first thing you try. You wanna keep trying until you get it to perfect. Now, I can see on this that it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and go straight from the microfiber cutting pad, and I'm gonna skip straight to the white polish pad. Now, I wanna make sure that I have this on there well, and I wanna make sure that I get this area looking great before I just continue on and do the whole car. So with the polish in the polishing pad, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing that I did earlier with the microfiber cutting pad. I'm gonna go ahead and start it at setting four, work it in a bit, and then take it to setting six, and again, a few pounds of pressure over the head, a little bit more correction because it needs it. This paint is hard as nails. It's gonna take a little bit more effort to get it perfect. All right, using our premium microfiber towel, let's see how this comes up. All right, so I am totally convinced at this point that my process is strong. Let's say just for a second, let's say, you know what? I'm not totally happy. What else could I possibly do? You could add a step in between. In other words, you could go from the microfiber cutting pad to the foam blue pad and then to the white. So I'm gonna turn our two-step system into a three-step system because I just need a little bit more bite and it's all depending on your clear coat. Again, no two cars are in the same condition as far as how many scratches they've got except for the two that are rolling off the assembly line right this second. So besides those cars that are rolling off the assembly line, every car has gone through a different set of circumstances. You're gonna have to figure out what your car needs to get perfect, and it's critical for you to do that. Now let's say that maybe your finish, you feel like when you're all done, there's a tiny bit of haze left. On, on this most common, black. Black with no metallic, you'll see that. This pad will be your friend. You might add a last step using the super soft, ultra fine red pad, and you'll use that with our polish. This process could be your last thing to try to make sure, gosh, I'm just trying to get that last little tiny bit of haze out. Figuring out what your finish needs to get perfect, that's really part of the fun. Realize, it's not just a, oh great, I gotta go figure this out. Well, take a look, get your light out, look really carefully and take a look again, and take a look again, and then you're just like, whoa, that is awesome. It's exciting to get perfect. So when you're done, you gotta realize that you're not really done because at this point you have a perfectly corrected finish, but how do you wanna protect it from the elements? Well, if it's a daily driver or it's parked outside a lot, make sure that you use a ceramic coating, okay? Either a spray coating or a proper full-on ceramic coating. Those are the things that are gonna give you the best protection by a long shot. 
Next in line for protection is gonna be a synthetic like our paint sealant. Good protection, durable, longevity. Paint sealant and H2O Garden Gloss are two products that are in the same family there for using a synthetic paint sealant. Now, let's say you drive a car that doesn't really go out in the elements at all. Something that might go out to the coffee shop and back. Well, guess what? That's where you'd use your wax, okay? People use wax on old original finishes. People use wax on cars that they're not trying to protect from serious elements. That's when your wax comes in real handy. And of course, it's super, super easy to use. But no matter what, make sure that when you're done doing all the paint correction on your finish, do something to make sure and seal that perfection in. Original paint from the 70s, 60s, 50s, heck, even some cars in the 80s, is considered single stage paint. Single stage paint means that you have a color sprayed on the finish, but no clear coat. In other words, every time you polish a car that is single stage paint, it's always gonna pull up a little bit of color on your pad. So, my old 1972 GMC Jimmy, this thing has almost all original paint. The rockers were redone, but everything else north of the belt line is original paint. It's very delicate and it's much easier actually to correct than clear coats. So I start always with a very soft pad, our polish pad, and I start with our polish on anything that is a single stage paint. Why? because it doesn't take an aggressive pad or compound to correct it. Now, you'll notice I'm still gonna pull up color regardless, and I wanna be very careful. You can actually see the edges all around this vehicle over the last almost 50 years, how this thing has started to wear a little bit, but bottom line, be careful of the edges, start with a soft pad, soft polish, you can get great results easily. So, like I said, you're always gonna be pulling up color. Oh, there's color, I'm, I'm ruining my paint. No, you're not. There's no clear coat on there protecting your finish. So, when you go ahead and you do a, a little area like this, I wanna find out what this needs exactly. I'll go ahead and wipe this. Oh, that was rich. So, uh, single stage paint really comes up very rich. It looks beautiful once it's polished. So, you can take a look at that, take a quick swipe and then take a quick look with the light. If you don't have outstanding lighting, make sure you get one of these guys. And you can see, okay, how did we do? Well, we did very well. However, there's still plenty of little fine scratches left. Now, why do I have so many scratches on my Jimmy? Well, I keep it under a car cover and that has a possibility of adding some scratches. I've washed it a zillion times and I detailed it, completely polished it out five years ago or four years ago when I bought it and haven't touched it since. So guess what? Now it's time to step it up a little bit, but instead of adding a more aggressive pad, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of more aggressive compound to the soft pad. Now, so, Pretty tricky, right? Well, I don't need an aggressive pad. I just need a tiny bit more bite out of the compound so that I can go ahead and achieve a bit more cut. And I think that'll give us the finish that we want. Once again, a little color on there. That's part of the deal. And you know, speaking of old cars, there's so many different variables when you're dealing with an old car finish. Custom car painters use a million different hardeners in their clear coat or their base coat. So figuring out which combination of pads and polishes will make your custom car look fantastic might take a few extra minutes, but it's worth it. Cause man, once you try it and you can get something like, oh heck yes. That combination did great for this. So it takes a few extra seconds to do this. Now, we do all of the detailing for Barrett Jackson. At those car auctions, you get everything under the sun. So we always try to do just something just like this. Do a small test panel, 
And if it's a single stage paint, we're gonna use a really soft pad, either the soft red or soft white. You're gonna find that just the right combination might not be the first one that comes to mind, but after just one or two tries, you too will have that total satisfaction of achieving perfection on one little area, and then you get to go ahead and do the whole vehicle. Have fun detailing your car. It's absolute therapy, and once you get it perfect, gosh, you're gonna love it.